25 wins, four defeats and one draw. And he's twice fought for a world title. He was stopped in six rounds by uh, Vladimir Klitschko a few years back. He has actually fought over here in Ireland back in 2007 on the undercard of a Bernard, Bernard Dunn uh, fight down at the point in Dublin. And uh, so he knows about fighting over here. He's talking through uh, a translator here. Can you ask Francesco what he hopes to produce on Saturday night? What sort of plan he has? Um, we're going to talk about uh, Francisco Pianetta right now. It is uh, August the fourteenth, Tuesday, nine o three a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Tyson Fury uh, Francisco Pianetta press conference just ended, and then on Thursday, the having call Frampton versus Luke Jackson. So this is me doing a little brief review of the press conference. I got to admit, you know, I wasn't entertained by it, and me having watching, having watched hundreds of press conferences and covered you know hundreds of press conferences uh you know i mean i guess yeah i don't i don't know i don't know i mean i'm not going to recommend you guys go watch and say yo this is a press conference you need to watch we didn't learn anything new outside of uh what's been talked about um to us over social media the last several weeks which is um we're going to hear about um, uh, Frank Warren talking about he has to beat Pianetta because Wilder's going to be in the building. For those who don't know, Wilder is going to be doing special guest commentary, I'm guessing, for the fight. He's going to be in attendance in Belfast, in Ireland. Thank you. I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. Shout out to Mikey and uh, Gary. We are providing full coverage um, for the event. So hopefully... We'll be able to get um, some words from Deontay Wilder here on the channel over the weekend. But nonetheless, um, moving on. Okay, well, let, let's get this part out of the way first. Then we're going to listen to Frank Warren, a little bit from Tyson Fury. And the pieces that I'm um, I'm going to show you is we're going to talk about is pretty much the, you know, the nitty gritty of the press conference. He's going to give his best and he's looking forward to the fight and it's an honor to him to box in front of such an, an audience. What do you think of Tyson Fury as a boxer? Do you think he is the true heavyweight champion? My bad, hold on. It was something I wanted to show you. Um, he has a high meaning of him, and he was very um, pleased of his uh, victory about um, Klitschko, and yeah, he's got a high meaning. Okay, um, he has a high meaning of him, and he was very um, pleased of his um, victory about um, Klitschko, and yeah, he's got a high meaning of him. So he rates him very highly. Yes. Tyson, have you had a uh, chance to see a lot of this fella? Yeah, I study my heavyweights and I know he's fought some good men. Um, he had a very good winning spree, 28 and 0 when he fought Klitschko. I'm not underestimating Francesco, I know he's a very big guy, big strong fella, and he knows if he wins this fight, then he could go on to fight Wilder instead of me. So it's all. Hold on. I doubt Wilder would fight him. Wilder would go on and fight Dominic Bazile. My bad. And in heavyweight boxing, you take your eye off the goal for 10 seconds, you're out there. So I know what to expect. I expect him to bring his best performance. And he's A game, and he's going to come and try and knock me out because that's what they all try and do. Um, we're going to stop right there because he's going to go on a bit of a rambling that doesn't really have anything, you know, noteworthy to do with the fight. So, you know, Francisco uh, Pianetta. Let's go through some names that he's fought over his career. He's a very experienced fighter, won a loss. Oliver, Oliver McCall, Francois Botha, the big fight, Vladimir Klitschko, which I covered, by the way, on another channel. Uh, Ruslan Chagiev, Kevin Johnson, who he lost to, 
and now he's uh fighting Tyson Fury. You know, this guy can fuck up a lot of shit. I hope it's not going to be, you know, one of those fights that look like the fix is already in because people still don't want to believe that Wilder versus Fury is very likely to be announced. Why is this doing this? What the fuck is going on? Just Okay, there we go. Um, is likely to be announced this weekend, you know, if Tyson Fury beats uh, Francisco Pianetta. For example, remember when um, um, Canelo uh, Golovkin was announced after Canelo beat Chavez Jr.? People thought the fix was in. Remember when um, Sergio Martinez, no, um, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. beat Andy Lee, correct? And then the Sergio Martinez fight was announced after that. This is one of those like situations. It's the same thing. It's not anything new in boxing. It's just that people are like, well, Shelly Finkel said this. And, you know, I think that if you had like check marks, right, of fight negotiations and things we hear and what we know in the media and stuff like that, or what you see on social media, I think that all the checks outside of the fight being officially announced have been checked, you know? And I understand what people are saying is that Tyson Fury's had too much time off, you know, two and a half years. And then he's going to be going, you know, um, by the time he steps into the ring against Deontay Wilder, what would it be? Uh, three years, you know, since he, you know, fought uh, Vladimir Klitschko. But, you know, he's daring to be great. The boxing skills are there. Defensively, he's got to sharpen up because there was one thing um, John um, pointed out. Yeah, I, I read your comment where... You know, the jab is lazy. Now, even Francisco Pianetta in what we saw in that little clip of a uh, training montage I show you, I showed you, is that he's working on, you know, trying to get in or or um, be defensive minded against the movement and the high punch output of a six foot seven, six foot eight, six foot nine Tyson Fury. I know people say, well, you know, he's listed as six foot nine. Now he's like six, seven, six, eight. You know, but whatever, that doesn't matter. You know, tomato, tomato. But the only thing, the only chance I'm really giving him is if he goes in there on some Marcos Madonna shit and says, you know what, I'm coming in here to fight. I know people saying you're going to fight Deontay Wilder next. I'm not trying to hear that shit. I'm going to fuck you up. Excuse my language. But meaning he's got to go balls to the wall. He can't just go in there thinking he's going to go in there and just slow roll and try to box Tyson Fury. Because it's like, yo, bro, like the odds are against you. They already talking about the next fight. They got Deontay Wilder in Ireland, right? So automatically the post fight is going to be great. I already pretty much knew that Showtime was going to pick this fight up. Just, you know, it just, you know, it just was, it, it just went on one of them things that, oh, all right, Showtime is likely going to pick this up, especially since they have invested interest in Carl Frampton, of course, you know, want him to likely fight Leo Cena Cruz sometime later on in the future. But then with Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, you know, it was, it, they did the right thing by picking that up. Um, because it's looking like ESPN is in deep negotiations, according to their press release, when they um, signed their new deal with um, ESPN a couple of weeks ago is that they are trying to get Frank Warren fights or BT sport fights, all of them over on ESPN plus. So this could be one of the last fights we see on here. You know, I don't know, but anyway, moving forward, I look at it like this. Tyson Fury is should likely go in there and, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know if, he, I don't know if he's, if he's going to get the knockout. But I think he, I think he should go for it, you know, because this is a fight where he's got to sell himself to American pay-per-view because when he fights Deontay Wilder, it's going to be on American pay-per-view. I'm hearing in in wait. November. Early November or early November or or late, late, late October. That's because they're trying to give as much space from understanding. This is from a. Um, the, the sources I have on this is from a Dan Rayfield interview Stephen Stephen Espinoza did with um with uh, uh Dan Rayfield ESPN on ESPN Plus. So they want to keep that Wilder Fury and Mikey Garcia 
uh, Errol Spence pay-per-view as far away as they possibly can with maneuvering and looking at competing competition and things like that to be able to maximize the profits on both of those pay-per-view pay-per-views and also expect them to stack the cards. You know, expect it for guys like Adrian Broner, you know, the Charlos, Javante Davis to be mixed in on those cards in some in, on those pay-per-views in some type of way, shape, or form. You know, that's what it's looking like um, Showtime is going to do is put on two big-ass pay-per-views at the end of this year to make people say, okay, all right, they, you know, they just had a pay-per-view last month. Oh, they got another one. That shit going to be lit, you know, looking at the cards. So, in regards to Tyson Fury, the fact that this fight is going to be free here in the States is going to be on the, Yo- it's, it's going to be on the Showtime YouTube page and the Showtime Facebook page. I'm going to put links down below in the description box. In fact, all the information you need is down below in the description box. So he's going to be showcasing himself, man. You know, and for pay-per-view, you know, we got to see what these numbers do because these numbers are going to dictate how much these guys are going to get against Anthony Joshua. Hopefully Anthony Joshua beats Alexander Pavek and when, you know, that happens September the 22nd. So this is a fight where both of these guys are selling themselves. But anyway, let's listen to this. This before we hear from the... Uh from the main protagonist just set the uh, set the scene for this one because Tyson interesting developments over the last uh, over the last week or two and a lot on this fight he's wanting to look good and to make a statement which resonates both sides of the Atlantic well he does and obviously you hear from the big man himself the lineal world champion that's what he is he's undefeated and you know, he's got to go out there and win the fight and if he wins it then uh, we, you know, it's no secret Wilder's going to be in for the fight, and uh, hopefully from there afterwards we will be in a position where Tyson will be in there looking to get reclaim his belts. But this man on the on my left here, he's obviously not coming to make up the numbers. I always say he's coming to fight. So Pianetta could be that banana skin, and we see that happen recently with uh, James DeGal and Truax. I put that fight on. James DeGale was going to, if he'd have come through that, he was going to fight Billy Joe Saunders and he got beaten. So, any- it can happen. It can happen. This was uh, the best part of the press conference, clearly. I've ever been. Listen, I don't make excuses. If he chins me, I crawl across the ring on my knees and kiss his two feet. Because he's obviously a better man than me and a better man than I've ever been. Listen, I don't make excuses. If I can beat Francesco Pianetta, I beat another boxer. Big deal. But if he beats me, he, he's he, he's going on to something very big. It's life changing for him. Um, if I can't beat Francesco Pianetta, then I'm going nowhere because I, it's it's not a world title fight. We know that it's a comeback fight. Francesco Pianetta is a very dangerous opponent, but me being in my mind, I think I'm the greatest heavyweight that's ever been born. So I should handle Francesco Pianetta. And whoever else, Deontay Wilde, Anthony Joshua, whoever else, all the bums out there. To me, they're only bums anyway. They're, they're all, all bums. So, if I can't beat him, I'm not going to beat the rest of them. That's what it is. I should. You know, he said he was uh, 28 stone, um, 292 pounds. He wants to come into the weigh-in, which is going to be this Friday. I'm going to cover it at about 250 or so. He was 276 in his last fight, correct? In his return fight against uh, Sefri, uh, Sefra. How do you pronounce his name? I forgot. So that's that's a story within itself. Losing 100 and you know 40 plus you know pounds. And he talked about like, you know, like how I can imagine training all year round like that's, you know, that does a lot to you mentally. So he probably really wants to get in there and prove himself. But, you know, what that does to your body long term and, you know, the drug abuse, we don't know how. I mean, obviously, you know, there's allegations and, you know, he even said himself he was doing a lot of drugs, but we don't. I mean, he's still young, you know, and he seems to have a really high boxing IQ. Tyson Fury's selling point is his movement. You know, for him being six foot nine, you know, moving around the ring, you know, not gassing out, being able to throw a lot of punches, being able to fight left handed like he beat Derek Chisora in the, in the second fight. He's got so many tricks in his bag. But. As we learned with Deontay Wilder or with any fighter, one punch can knock you out and Deontay Wilder will fuck you up. 
He got dropped by a cruiserweight. And uh, and um, we're going to talk about that in the next video when I do the weigh-in uh video. But he got dropped by a cruiserweight and um, Steve Cunningham. We also got to talk about his uh skills on the mic. See, he's this nice guy, you know. I mean, it's 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 nothing wrong with that. I just don't like the playful, you know, shit he be doing. Like he tried to get everybody singing at the press conference. <sighs> you know, yeah, whatever, whatever. Still a huge fan, huge supporter. T-Street Controversy, this is T-Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe.